Welcome to TFR Newsroom. I'm your host, Swapnil Bhartia, and my guest today is Jared Ruckel, Director of Product Marketing at HashiCorp. Jared, it's great to have you on the show. Good to be with you. Last week, if I'm not wrong, you folks released a State of Cloud Strategy Survey. Uh, we are going to talk about that survey. Before we get started, what was the goal or idea behind that survey? What inputs, what insights you are trying to gain? I think there's a couple of uh, goals and objectives we had. Uh, I think that we've seen these surveys come out from from various vendors, various foundations with a certain technology slant about the the state of cloud, the state of DevOps, or you know the state of a certain development framework. But we hadn't quite seen anything about the state of of multi cloud, its adoption, its challenges, the success factors that folks were having. And we felt that we had a really unique kind of uh, audience to draw from with our uh, practitioner database. Um, And so we set out a survey that was really designed to capture the state of cloud adoption and kind of explore this idea of multi-cloud usage uh, across the enterprise as well as small businesses. So we wanted to really uh, poke at that angle to see if we could help the industry in general kind of figure out what the state of play was there. What is the percent of people who are already on multi-cloud? Yeah, I think at, at, at a basic level, you know, the, the headline is, you know, we're really in the multi-cloud era, according to the survey respondents. And, you know, 76% said they were already, you know, multi-cloud. And, you know, this really kind of you know, matches a lot of the anecdotal, you know, stories that we've seen in, in recent times where you have, you know, the hyperscalers, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google all investing billions and billions of dollars in innovative services, new certifications, new data center locations. And there's really something unique and differentiating about all of these different clouds if you look at it from a certain use case uh, perspective. So it's really not surprising that people would want to take advantage of those hyperscalers, as well as think about what they're currently doing with their on-premises footprint. That's where a lot of really important data and applications already reside. So people are thinking about doing innovative things there as well. So it kind of matches uh, what you would expect given all the innovation happening on-prem and in the, the hyperscaler arena. Did you also try to explore what is driving people towards cloud or multi-cloud in general? We do know that last year, because of pandemic, a lot of companies were rushing towards digital transformation and digital transformation in the cloud, kind of, you know, so not into each other. So talk about what has been your observation based uh, through this survey. Yeah, there's a, a couple of different things that you kind of, you'll come into, come into play here. And you mentioned, you know, digital transformation, and that's, you kind of really become kind of a a catch-all term that can mean a lot of different things. Um, I think when we dig into the respondents and kind of you look at what some of the anecdotal feedback has been based on the survey, it really comes down to uh, having custom software and being able to build custom software, run that custom software, scale that custom software across cloud environments. That's really something that is uh, kind of the the definition of digital transformation. So clearly people are trying to get fantastic at uh, at building and and running that software. So I think that's a, a key thing that's driving a lot of this. Um, there's also people that are looking at uh, cloud as a way to increase the security posture of their organization, thinking that all these cloud providers have uh, really expert security folks on staff providing incredible amounts of expertise and you know, protecting infrastructure and applications in a way that just isn't uh, possible for a single organization. Um, there's also people looking to look to, to cloud for cost benefits as well, maybe some of that OpEx versus CapEx kind of you know, conversation. Um, interestingly, security and cost were also key challenges, which, again, you would expect kind of given the complexity of cloud uh, is, and the, the wrinkles that you know, brings in compared to how traditional IT has evolved. You mentioned so many key points that I want to talk about. Let's start with the cost for, for now. OK, it's very easy. You just put everything on the credit card and you're done. But we also see a lot of you know, cloud waste. And since there are so many things wrapped up, you actually don't. Uh, the joke is that you can actually buy a mainframe for what you'll pay <laughs> for cloud. You know, uh, so from the cloud uh, cost perspective, what the service tells us? Yeah, the, one of the really big uh, highlights there is that um, the the larger the company, the larger your cloud budget tends to be, and the the larger your cloud budget, the the more waste that you tend to that you tend to see. And the survey respondents were had uh, a lot more anxiety or concerns about cost uh, the larger they were. Um, and I think that's uh, so because it still is, is quite early in, in cloud, even though people are signing, you know, really big contracts with the hyperscalers, you know, they may not be feeling confident about all those dollars being spent in the optimized way. That's why you see a lot of the cloud providers really focusing on providing first party services 
that are going to give customers that insight into billing and where their money is is going. Um, I think there is still a, a fair amount of uh, of uh, people that are provisioning, you know, environments that are you know way too large, or they're kind of zombie environments that you know, serve a, a great purpose for a few days, but then never get spun down. Lots of people over provisioning virtual machines as, as well, um, and of course, for our part at HashiCorp, we have tools that can help customers, you know, uh, tighten up on those cost benefits. Um, so that was a really interesting thing to, to come out and, and see. Um, and clearly, that's something that people uh, want to make sure they're getting the most bang for their cloud dollar. Uh, another thing that I, I just want your insights into, uh, as you're talking about. Uh, the bigger the company, the bigger the cloud budget. But there's one more factor that we often don't talk about, and that is like talent, you know. Uh, Linux Foundation keeps coming up with the surveys that there are not enough people there. And some of these cloud native technology are so new. I mean, there are so many projects that were just announced last week. How can you find people who are skilled in that? So is uh, what role is skill playing? Because sometimes a lot of people may not uh, move forward because they cannot even find people. And then, you know, since there are uh, no jobs, so they're not people, it's kind of a chicken and egg situation. So let's talk about a skill shortage. Yeah, that was, uh, you're, you're spot on with that comment. And I think that that's you know, been borne out in a lot of these, you know, type of surveys and just a lot of people, you know, they really feel that their progress is being hindered based on the, the, the skills they can find out there in the marketplace. Um, and the survey says that the, the biggest you know, challenge for folks uh, in, in multi-cloud is skills shortage. 57% of respondents said that the skills shortage was the number one thing uh, uh, really holding them back. And so um, it, is, it is a real issue. There's been a, a few of the job descriptions that we all kind of you know, roll our eyes out about people wanting, you know, 10 years of Kubernetes experience. You know, the project, of course, hasn't been around that long. There's also, you know, all these, you know, very high bar requirements for people in InfoSec and uh, among uh, other kinds of roles. So just hiring across the board is uh, something that is really hindering folks. And um, there's probably a hard look that people need to do uh, about what they're doing um, in terms of hiring people. And then in terms of, you know, recruiting and, and training up their own staff that already exist. And so this number uh, just sort of points to the idea that maybe folks need to think uh, creatively about how they're finding talent and maybe need to think about, you know, consolidating some of the tool change they use and trying to focus on a, a much more uh, tighter set of technologies. You also talked about a security. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, one thing that I do like about cloud, and I may be totally wrong, it has kind of changed the way we used to look at security. Security used to be someone else's problem. It was a totally silo. But now it is kind of moving into a developer's pipeline. Uh, we are talking about, you know, DevSecOps. Even you know when you look at SREs, you know sometimes it's bundling a lot of things. Um, any insights from security's perspective? Yeah, and, and that's one of the you know, really key areas where people were you know, moving to the cloud because of security. Uh, that was uh, an interesting you know tidbit. But then also security is a major uh, point of anxiety for folks as they move into cloud. And of course, we've all seen you know the the news headlines about you know ransomware, about you know nation states becoming you know uh, bad actors in, in terms of launching you know cyber threats. And so this threat landscape is very quickly evolving and, and very dynamic. And, and to your point. You have to think very differently about security in the in the cloud era. So, I think you make a, a great point about security being really more of a of a complicated kinds of question. And there's a really a shared security model that a lot of the folks have have talked about. And I think that's starting to resonate with people based on what the survey uh, data showed us and what the the anecdotal feedback was. Where you have perhaps the cloud provider responsible for securing the physical data center, securing parts of the infrastructure, but then it's very much on the, the cloud user to secure the application, to secure the data. And then to your point about uh, developers, you know, thinking about security first, we see a big movement in shifting left where you make security part of the development process, you know, before you get into the, the CI, CD kinds of pipelines, you have security to be something that's thought about you know, very early. And companies that are taking this progressive mindset uh, are clearly able to sleep maybe a little bit better at night than folks that are you know, still looking at the traditional security model that's out there. Um, but a lot of great data to unpack uh, with respect to security in the cloud. You know, the last thing I, I'd mentioned is related to uh, this scale and uh, the scale issue where just as companies that had large budgets were more concerned about waste, 
the, the larger companies were also had a lot more anxiety about you know teams working in, in silos and and clearly I think a lot of teams are excited about the progress they've made with multi cloud you know uh, that speaks to some of the people that are really pleased with where they are in, in multi cloud uh, but big companies are still worried about you know teams working in silos they may have you know pockets of innovation happening with certain application teams in a, in a few places maybe they even have whole your know, divisions that are doing the right thing with innovation, doing the right thing with security and compliance, doing the right thing in terms of operating efficiently. Um, but if you ask a lot of the survey respondents, they have a lot of concerns that they aren't quite industrializing multi-cloud uh, across their entire business, across their entire enterprise. Even as they're acquiring new companies, they haven't been able to kind of scale that out and make teams immediately productive with uh, these uh, best practices and being able to, to plug and chug with those things over time. So I think this is another really big thing that for us as an industry to spend some time really talking about, about how you can make folks productive uh, in accordance with your know, corporate best practices in really a, a bare minimum of time. And that's a big part of what we focus on at HashiCorp with our tools. I, I kind of look at it tribal knowledge, you know, that, you know, some teams do, do or some people, they know how to solve when they move out, you are clueless. One more thing is that, <clears throat> When we look at multi-cloud, especially, uh, how much did you did you ask the question, or from your own perspective, how much concern is there for data gravity? Because data has some gravity, and one of the reasons people try to move to the cloud is that they feel that hey, you can just walk around everywhere. But sometimes you get vendor logged in. Uh, did you explore that? If not, then from Hashi's perspective, what have you seen there? Yeah, I think there's a little bit of some of that there where, where people were uh, thinking about multi-cloud consciously to to avoid, you know, v vendor lock-in. And this was a phenomenon that we saw, you know, maybe uh, vary by, by vertical industry as well with retailers, you know, maybe being a little bit wary about, you know, putting their data on uh, AWS, for example, since Amazon has such a far-ranging, you know, retail business. Um, but I think really the, the, the key thing that we've seen, and this is more outside of the survey, is that, you know, multi-cloud is... Uh, uh, really something that should be thought about you know, really thoughtfully where, you know, multi-cloud doesn't necessarily mean, you know, running the same application on different clouds and having the same database and having this HA and, and DR kind of scenario across clouds. Um, that can be a really useful uh, scenario, but that shouldn't be something that becomes the default. It really becomes about, you know, thinking about you know, the, the workflows, thinking about what's going to make your team successful and tapping into those different you know, capabilities, not necessarily trying to use a bunch of clouds for the same type of type of use case. So um, multi-cloud is, is very popular. It's become the, the default pattern, according to the survey. Um, but you also need to be very thoughtful about how you employ it because it can get you know, very messy very quickly if you don't have a, a really clear strategy about how to onboard teams in a really meaningful way to expose uh, the, the APIs of those different cloud providers in a way that's not disruptive. That's another really big thing that folks are wrestling with is that the APIs are different, the workflows are different. And so capitalizing on multi-cloud is a really big challenge from that point of view. And again, our tools at HashiCorp you know, can help folks with that to a degree. And since so you brought this topic up, I do want to go just <clears throat> a bit deeper in that is uh, uh, when we talk about multi-cloud, is multi-cloud more or less running the same application as you're talking about in different clouds versus leveraging, you know, so it is actually kind of hybrid, even different architecture, you know, that's what is multi-cloud all about. So from your perspective or what you have seen in this service, how do you look at it? Yeah, we, we picked a, the, a, a straightforward definition there where multi-cloud is using uh, more than one cloud, you know, one private cloud, one public cloud, for example, would fit into this you know, multi-cloud definition. Using two different public clouds would fall into that same type of definition. So we picked the simplest example just to try and you know, level set on that and use the survey just to explore it from that basic definition. And there's all kinds of other ways you can slice and dice the information, but that's the definition we use for this one. And I think that's really just kind of a, a pragmatic way to go to get the, the broadest perspective about what's actually happening with multi-cloud. Gerard, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only the survey you folks conducted, but also sharing some of the insights from what you, not only you have learned from through this survey, but also sharing your own insights, which gives us a very clear picture of you know uh, how multi-cloud is shaping up. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you for your time today. You're very welcome. It was my pleasure. And we'll see you again soon.